Stocks have soared off the lows, of course. Another area of the market is quietly on a tear, and that's high yield. The HYG, the corporate bond ETF, within a hair of its 52-week high. For more on the bond market, let's bring in Chris Concanon. He's the president and COO of Market Access. This is a fixed income electronic platform. Chris, uh, welcome. You just became the COO uh, and president a short while ago. Explain what Market Access does. It's all about essentially bringing electronic trading to the bond market, which happened here, down here, 20 years ago. It did change down here, and thanks for having me, Bob. Sure. Uh, market Access is truly a fintech company. It has uh, really changed and altered the way fixed income is traded today, a fully electronic market uh, on Market Access. Uh, last year, in 2018, we traded 1.7 trillion of fixed income security. So it's such a dramatic change to a, a market that is uh, absolutely enormous. And the market seems to like it. it. It hit an historic high just last week. So somebody's obviously buying into that. What, I was surprised only 30% of all bond trading is done electronically, only 30%. Now here, you, of course, obviously it's close to 100% essentially in the equities market. Why is the bond market lagged so far behind in terms of electronic trading? Why is it still largely over the counter? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, one is the number of instruments in the, in the market. Um, it's a much larger market. It's somewhere around three times the size of the equity market. Uh, so when you have that many interest, instruments, you really are dependent on a dealer-driven market. Uh, but over time, it's, it's really because of market access. It's delivered a centralized pricing market uh, to the individual investor and to institutional investors largely. And I want to emphasize, uh, you see the screen here, the, the, these are big funds out there. The AGG, which is the largest bond fund out there, almost $60 billion, Vanguard Total Bond, uh, investment grade corporate, that's the biggest corporate bond ETF. The TIPS market's also big. And we mentioned high yield, despite all of the uh, anxiety about the, you know, a downturn in the economy, uh, that's been holding up uh, very well uh, on top of that. Where do we go from here? How, wh what is your mission? Do you, do you think five years from now, 60% of the bond market will be, will be electronic? I do think we have both a growing bond market, so the turnover of the market is actually increasing uh, year over year. Part of that is the efficiency of the market. When you deliver electronic trading to any market, including the U.S. equity market, the overall turnover, the daily turnover grows, and we're experiencing that now. So I do believe the, the close to 30% is electronic today. We should be uh, closing in on 50 and percent of the market in, in the coming years. Kevin, do you see opportunities in, 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 in buying into the bond market? I do, because I think the ETF market around credit and bonds is five years behind that of the its structures and the products that were brought out in equities. I can't find product that fits many conservative mandates in bond ETFs. For example, if I don't want market cap weighted, particularly in credit markets like JNK, or, you know, you, I can't own a C credit. That's the bottom 18% of JNK. Why hasn't that been solved for me? Why isn't there something with duration? I can buy two year, three year, four year, five year duration. So I can blend ETFs together to get a duration that I'm comfortable with in a mandate. None of that exists yet. In, in the credit and bond markets, and that is a, an issue. And most of the manufacturers say there's not enough liquidity to do that because of all of the regulation. The bonds don't rely or are not sitting on the money center banks anymore. They're off in hedge fund land. And that's a problem with over-regulating a market. That is why we don't get innovation, in my view, in the credit market with ETF indexes, because it's an over-regulated mar over market that's not liquid enough. Is, that, well, is it solvable, what his concern? Uh, it, you know, some of it's being solved by alternative uh, liquidity providers. We're seeing an onslaught of the same market makers that exist in this equity market. Uh, they've been big supporters of the fixed income ETF market, and they're transforming the fixed income underlying market. And, and they're one of the reasons why the electronic market um, portion of the fixed income market is growing. They're driving that change. Yeah. Tim, where do, your, your thoughts on well, that? My, and my question, Chris, would be in, in December, look at the HYG, look at the credit markets, look at the junk bond market, and look at, on some level, you could make an argument that the equity market was pushing around the credit markets, or I'd be curious to get your take on what was a massive drawdown in the HYG or the JNK, the two big junk bond ETFs. 
Um, and, and ultimately, this is probably equity guys trying to hedge off credit risk that they don't know a whole lot about. But to what extent do you see that these ETFs are pushing around credit markets? Because everyone I was talking to who was trading high yield um, at a desk with a pad and, and buying and selling was not seeing a lot trading. Things were just getting marked down. And you can argue the ETF market exacerbated that. Well, we actually saw on our platform uh, record volumes in December. Because of that drawdown in the ETF market, uh, the, the market makers that support those ETFs were playing into the fixed income market quite heavily. Right. Um, and we didn't see uh, a, a really uh, a problem in the trading of the market. The spread stayed tight. The market between the ETF and the underlying fixed income uh, stayed fairly tight. So it was, it was a very attractive uh, disruption to the market. Well, how do you feel about active traded bonds uh, that are out there? For example, MINT, which is the PIMCO ETF. That's actually the biggest actively traded uh, ETF that's out there, MINT. It's attracted a lot of money. Uh, have, have, is there the same debate in active bond management as there is in active stock management? That is that the active managers do not outperform on any regular basis. I think it's hard to say because, uh, you know, the, when, when you look at the evolution of the indexes in the fixed income space, I think there's a lot more we can do in that space in terms of picking the right liquidity, uh, the right instruments. Um, so the active uh, managed ETF, uh, whether it's equities or fixed income, I think there's true application in both.